Odd neuropathic pain disorders are a common uh, problem in the United States and across the world. Um, some of the more common ones that we tend to see are uh, post mastectomy syndrome, uh, post thoracotomy syndrome, and post inguinal hernia repair syndrome. Um, they're typically considered neuropathic pain states, um, and so initially the best treatment options uh, include a multimodal approach using various types of medications, uh, things like um, anti uh, neuropathic pain medications, um, as well as treating any comorbidities that these patients may have, things such as depression, anxiety, and sleep disorders. Yeah, so the odd neuropathic pain syndromes that we decided to focus on were the three that Ignacio just talked about. Um, and I think just to emphasize, we, we did try to approach different aspects of um, diagnosing and treating these syndromes. Um, and I think we tried to emphasize using a multimodal approach, um, medical treatment, procedural interventions, um, psychological interventions like cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, graded motor imagery. Um, those are the types of therapies that benefit patients the best when they're all used in conjunction with each other. So we consider them odd neuropathic uh, pain disorders. It's not the typical pain, uh, neuropathic pain disorders that we commonly think of, um, both in our field pain management and primary care, which tend to be more of things like diabetic neuropathy, which affects a larger proportion of the population um, from uh, an odd neuropathic pain state. Um, although these are common, they're usually post-surgical, um, and uh, their treatment uh, may differ a little bit as well. I'm not sure if odd is necessarily the right word. Um, they are pretty common, so it's actually not that odd. Um, but they're odd in the sense that not everyone gets them after these certain types of surgeries. So it's only a certain subset of patients that tend to get long um, sequelae of pain after these certain types of surgeries. So I guess in that way it's odd, but they are actually pretty prevalent for um, people that experience it. So uh, some of the more common ones um, uh, that have the best evidence for them are things like gabapentin uh, and uh, pregabalin. Um, those are usually considered the first line of therapy for these kind of pain symptoms. Um, second line therapy would be things like um, uh, some antidepressants, specifically like duloxetine uh, and venlafaxine, uh, which have uh, or work on the serotonin and norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitor pathway, um, and that has been shown to be pretty successful in, in these patients as well. Uh, in general, not. Um, most people consider opioids in these, in these patients more as a second line and even third line. Um, ideally, you want to try to maximize some of the non-opioid modalities, so again, uh, things like gabapentin uh, and pregabalin, uh, and then also treat any uh, associated comorbidities, things like depression and anxiety. So some of the non-pharmacological therapies for odd neuropathic pain syndromes um, would be a lot of um, probably preemptive modalities, uh, meaning kind of targeting pain before noxious stimuli happens. And in a lot of these cases, it would be the surgery. So a lot of um, preemptive procedures, like a thoracic epidural or a paravagebral catheter, um, different types of um, pec blocks for a mastectomy, those types of procedures would be alternatives to medications to try to help prevent some of them from happening. Yeah, so I think some of the procedures and things um, that are done for these types of odd neuropathic pain procedures can't necessarily be performed by a primary care doctor. And like I was saying, um, it's mainly done in the preoperative or perioperative period. Um, a primary care physician would probably see these conditions um, months and months after a patient had the surgery. And maximizing a lot of the medication um, medications that Ignacio was talking about is probably the best way to try to um, initiate therapy for these patients. I think if beyond that they can't control their pain, um, it's probably better to refer to a pain specialist who could maybe try some of the other interventional procedures. Um, as adjuvant therapies. Uh, 
I would tell primary care physicians to either uh, consult pain management or refer to pain management um, if they have questions. You know, most pain management physicians are more than happy with just a phone call away. Um, and a lot of the times, um, we do see primary care physicians are able to start some of these medications. And in a lot of patients, they will do fine. They will never need to see a pain management physician. Um, but as soon as any questions come up where it just doesn't seem right, um, we're always just a phone call away.